Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Keys to Financial Confidence podcast. I'm your host, Marika Steimack. I'm an author, life coach, and app creator. We're going to dig deeper into the 40 simple concepts I've come up with in my book, Keys to Financial Confidence, Unlock Your Best Life. Here, you are going to finally figure out what living your best life means for you and how to set up your financial situation to get there. You are here for a reason, you want change, and you want to learn how. Let's dig in. Hey, everybody. Get ready to welcome more money into your life. Today, we have a special guest, Gary Grewal, a certified financial planner and the author of Financial Fives. It's a comprehensive guide offering valuable advice and actionable steps to help you make and save more money. In this episode, Gary will be sharing invaluable strategies to boost your finances and generate extra income. If you're looking to make some extra cash, this episode is for you. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, Gary. Today, we're going to talk about chapter 18 in my book, Find an Extra 50 to $100 Today. But before we dive in, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thanks, Marika. So I am a financial planner by trade. I've been one pretty much my entire career. And I love cars, sustainability, and plant-based food. That's kind of like my ethos. So I'm based currently around the country, but currently I'm in Northern California. Kind of the whole nomad thing while I was able to work remotely. But yeah, I am also an author of Financial Fives, the top 325 ways to save, earn, and thrive to retire before 65. Lots of rhyming there. Oh, it is such a good book. Yeah, thank you so much. Likewise, yours too. So I had been thinking about writing a book for a while, and I like the idea of blogging. So I said, you know, it's a way to get your thoughts out in a manner that may help some others. So why not try it out? So I did that, and that's been enjoyable. And I post, you know, once a month on my website, financialfives.com. And I just really wanted to use what's up here in my mind to help other people, whether it can or not. Oh, and it's great. I mean, the insights coming out of your book are so fun. It was such a fun read. It was like a wealth of knowledge. That's why I'm excited to talk about this topic for you, because I think that you're going to be able to provide the audience with some really interesting ways on how to find some extra cash. Before we get into that, what do you think prevents people from making some extra money? For me, I really think it's just lack of knowledge. It's just people think it's either too hard, they don't think it's possible, or maybe they're just overwhelmed with their day-to-day life. It's just a lot of people, I have empathy for them because most of us work, we have other obligations, and then we're just burnt out and want to relax, right? So we're not proactively looking at ways, and we think that the hurdle is so high to look at simple ways to save money, to find ways to get a little bit each and every day or each and every month. Yeah. So we're tired probably from just working our nine to five jobs or whatever it is, our 40 hour work weeks. And you think, or you found that you see people are just exhausted and they don't know where to search to make that extra money. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of things, right? I mean, recently we've been hearing about quiet quitting, right? Or like this new trend going on as bare minimum Mondays where People are getting the Sunday scaries and they're like, oh, I just got to take care of my mental health on Mondays, which is understandable, right? We've been through a lot of change the last couple of years, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of polarization. And so a lot of people are just like, I just want to take care of myself. And then to your point, it's time, right? 10 years ago, we didn't have so many things drawing for our attention like today for social media and YouTube and TikTok and Instagram, podcasts, books. So it's just a lot of people feel like there's just this mentality of hustle culture they talk about, right? You've always got to be on, always be on the go. What's the next thing to do? And I think a lot of people are consciously opting out of that because they're just burned out from it. They just want to live a little bit of life. And I think that the pandemic taught us that we don't have tomorrow is always promised. So a lot of people are just trying to find that right balance of taking care of their mental health, enjoying life, and then, you know, dealing with their jobs as they have to. Yeah. Do you think that the way you were raised could also influence this ability to sort of think outside the box of how to make more money? Oh, 100%. Yeah, I can speak from my own experience that that's the case. But 
you know, a lot of people, they're raised the point of like, just cook at home. Those are good habits and all of that. But a lot of the time we're taught to study hard, work hard in school, get a good job. The goal is just get a good job, right? We don't really learn a whole lot around that. You know, we learn in school, chemistry and English and history, but where do you learn personal finance? Where do you learn how to negotiate a salary or a car or the terms of a lease agreement, things like that. So there's so many things that we just kind of fall into because we think that's how it's done. But we don't always question, is this the best use of my time or my money? Things like that. Mm -hmm. Like when I talk about finding 50 to $100 a day, I don't mean like going out and stressing yourself out by getting another job. That's not what I'm talking about. What I do talk about in the book is just opening up your mind to different opportunities or be welcoming different ideas. So on that note, what are some ways to make an extra 50 to 100 bucks a day? Great question. So people may be thinking like, oh, a day, how can I do that per day? But there's a number of ways. So now what I would say is think about how much time you have to put into this endeavor, right? One of the easiest ways to do that is look at one of these apps. Do you like to drive? There's Uber, there's Lyft, there's DoorDash. I know plenty of people who easily make $200 a day doing that on their off time. Maybe $100 they want or a little less than that. So, and then you also have people that they walk dogs. There's Rover, there's TaskRabbit, right? There's these apps that I've done before that I'm just like, you know, I have four hours of nothing to do. Why don't I see if I can make myself useful? You don't have to do it. It's not like you have to interview for it, but you know, it's there if you need to. If you like to do some things, there are definitely people who will pay you to do it. And I would also say on top of that, there are opportunities like just switching bank accounts. Right now, interest rates are going up. So you have a lot of people that are jumping bank accounts. Bank account opening bonuses are the easiest ways, I think, to gain a couple hundred bucks. It takes some time, but you can get a couple hundred bucks. Another thing too is that something I found is every Wednesday is like when the sales overlap at your grocery store. Easy way to just get some shopping done. Going to a membership club, if you want to pay the membership fee, buy a gift card. If you buy a gift card at Costco, you can still shop at Costco. You don't have to be a member. Just so many things. For example, I work from home, right? A lot of us do. I bike everywhere that I can. In California, gas got up to six, seven dollars a gallon last year. So you bike more than you drive, you're going to save a lot at the pump. So some similar things like that, right? If we're thinking about what are your biggest cost outlays and how can you earn a little bit more? That's kind of what I think about. What do you like to do? How can you translate that into a service that you can earn money for? You know, we have so many things like you can rent out your bike on Spinlister. You can rent out your car on Turo. So there's ways for you to use some of these apps and make some of the stuff you already own or spending some time on what you would do anyways, right? You would like to go on walks in the park, take up a couple dogs with you on yeah. Rover. So. I mean, what about that feeling of people being embarrassed to show that they're working for these extra dollars? Do you know what I mean? No, I see what you mean. Yeah, I thought like, you know, I can go and do like a couple of DoorDash orders or something like that and make some extra money. But, you know, for me, I'm in that position where I don't have to do that. I have other side businesses, right? I have a box rental company, California Box Rental. I have a full-time job and I have financial fives. But for some people, they are trying to make a little bit of extra money per day. And I get it. Sometimes you feel shameful. What if I deliver food to somebody's house that I know? What if someone sees me picking up a DoorDash order at the restaurant? What if I'm driving for Lyft and I give someone I know a ride? But at the end of the day, you have to think about like, sometimes our minds just jump to the worst conclusion. You know, what makes us think that like this person that we know is going to think shamefully of us or less of us, right? What if they're like, wow, you're hustling, you're working hard, you're doing good, good on you. Why do we always jump to the assumption that they're going to think less of us? And you know what the key is? If they think less of us, are they really someone whose opinion you care about? You know, in these days, you know, we're so concerned about opinions of other people, right? People get hurt and offended off of someone's comments on a YouTube video. We really need to start to think about what really matters in life. If you have a good group of friends and family, someone you'd barely know is a loose connection, 
and they're just kind of making an offhanded comment to you because you're trying to make some extra money? Why are you allowing them to control how you feel about yourself? That's what I would say. Cool. I like that. Do you think it's important for someone to decide why they want to make this extra cash? Do you think it's important to have a goal instead of just being like, I just want to make some extra cash. So in order for this to be successful, in order for you to actually succeed in making some extra money, should you know what you need it for? Yeah, I would say to your point, I would say that you should want to have a goal of why you're doing it, right? Because if we're just doing it for, I just want to earn some extra money, I think without having a goal or a deadline in mind or something, we can get burned out. But if it's like, I really want to go on this trip in September, I need to save up $2,000 for it. Great. I mean, that's not a huge amount. And you can save that amount over the next couple of months by doing some of these things to make extra money. But if you're like, I just want to keep earning more, $5,200 a day is significant, but it may not be sustainable to the amount that you can do by just maybe getting a different job or starting a different business or asking for a raise. That's a more sustainable approach. But I would say if you have goals like I want to go on this trip or just I want to have another $250 a month to go out to a nice restaurant every month, there you go. But there's an amount in mind that once you've achieved it, you've earned it, you can go enjoy it and you're still on track for your other goals. That's at least how my mind would work. Same. I would need to know, like, why do I need to do this? A lot of the clients that I work with, the first question that I ask, I'm like, is there something that you're not using in your home, right? Like we consume so much or we have consumed so much. And now if you're stepping into this world of becoming more financially aware and wanting to become financially confident, you're probably looking around and saying, like, I have all this stuff around me that I don't need. So how about selling a little bit of that? Like, what do you think about that? I'm so glad you brought that up because that was me last year. (laughs) Oh, really? (laughs) Yeah, we were living with family right now as we're trying to buy a house and looking for a place to live. And so we were like, why do we have all this stuff? And I have been a minimalist, I like to say, since I moved to Denver several years ago. And you just learn as you move that stuff is baggage. You don't have to sell it and deal with it. So I'm a big fan of looking around your home, doing some cleaning. What do you actually need and use? Mm-hmm. So I had, for example, I had a Sega Dreamcast video game system from way back in the day when I was a kid. Never going to use it. Never going to use it. I thought maybe I'll, you know, want to keep it for nostalgic reasons. Yeah. But I played one game of Crazy Taxi and I was like, okay, I'm good. And I pulled it. And that was an easy way to make 200 bucks. But you know, you're so right, because even for people like me who are minimalists, I still find things I can get rid of. Grab a bag of clothes you don't want anymore, take them down to a thrift shop, maybe you can make 30 bucks. You look around, like for example, the bicycle you no longer want, cycling has become really popular. You'd be surprised what you can get. So many people, like we had an old treadmill we sold. So there's always a market for those things that you would be surprised at. I can't believe how many people, when there's this garage sale around here, they rush to the garage sales to find the deals. People always opt for deals, right? Yeah. So as I say, one man's trash is another's treasure. So if you have things around your house that you're like, this doesn't bring me happiness anymore, it doesn't fit my life anymore, think about selling it. So you also talked about maybe increasing your salary. This is another additional way to potentially make this extra cash. So how do people go about doing this? There's a number of ways to go about it. And it all really depends on how confident are you with your job. If you feel like things are maybe a little bit unstable at work, there's some cuts going on or finances are not so good, you want to make sure you do it at the right time. So for me, we have so many tools online right now, like PayScale, Salary.com, Indeed, different websites that share what the salary range is for this. And now, fortunately, There's a lot of states that are requiring the salary ranges to be posted on the job descriptions. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at a job similar to yours, look at a state like Colorado or California, find a similar job, and you can see what the range is for that based upon the years of experience. And I don't think you should be ashamed of talking to your colleagues about what you're earning and what they're earning. There's always that stigma of you can't talk about salary, you can't talk about this. Well, why not? Says who, right? If you and I are in the same position And maybe I've been here for seven years and you've been here for five years. But then I find out you're making 20,000 more than I am. I'll probably want to know why that is. I'll be happy for you, but I want to earn that too. 
So it's about coming up with a plan. Why should you earn more? What are your positive contributions? Assess that with your supervisor, your higher up. And if they say no, say what you need to do to get the yes. So you have a clear plan of action and at what point you can revisit it, right? Once you do X, Y, Z, we'll revisit this at your next review in six months. Great. Now you have that in writing. And if you feel like they're not going to honor their word, start looking around, make connections. We may be in a tough environment with a lot of layoffs right now, but guess what? The job market continues to be strong. Yes. So it never hurts to continue to keep those connections with recruiters who you know in your network. Always keep your LinkedIn brushed up. I would say whenever a recruiter reaches out to you, I never ignore them. If it's something I'm interested in, but I'm happy at my job, I'd say, thanks so much for reaching out. Let's certainly keep in touch. I'm not looking right now, but who knows what happens in the future, right? Because that way they're going to keep you on their list. And you now have a list of people to reach out to when you're ready to look for your next step. And the last thing I'll say is if you feel that you're not valued where you are and you've tried all of these options, it never hurts to consider going the self-employment route. I think for the majority of people I've spoken to, they wish they did it sooner. And they would think that if they wait any longer, they wouldn't do it. They'd scare themselves out of it, right? So if you have a skill set that would enable you to go self-employed and you've got a little bit of savings to carry you through the uncertain times, go for it. Oh, that's scary. It is. It is scary. But you know what? You only get one life and you don't know unless you try. And you know what else is scary? Getting fired or laid off and then not having any income. And maybe they'll generously give you a couple weeks of severance and that's it. You can always bet on yourself. So what I would say is, if you have any skill set, try it out. Try out something you like to do on the side or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And you can always fall back on your career. But you know, if you're not getting the value, if you're not being paid according to your value where you are, and you don't feel like you're able to find the job that you need, that fits your needs for your life and your wants in the future. There are a lot of ways to go self-employed, consulting, coaching, teaching. I had a client at my last job. He was a software engineer, but he loved architecture and design and working. He opened his own contracting business. And now he spends his days fixing people's, not fixing, but redesigning their kitchens and installing countertops. And he loves to work with his hands. And he's doing great. He loves his job. He's more busy than he can ever imagine, making just about the same money, but he loves going to work. So never underestimate yourself. And then that leads to the topic of side hustles. Side hustling is a lot of work. It's a lot of hours spent on trying to develop your business, trying to get yourself out there, especially with such an influx of people marketing themselves on social media. What are your thoughts on side hustles? Because this is an easy, maybe potentially for some people, this is a fantastic way to be able to make up to thousands of dollars a month. I would say that I have a side hustle, like I mentioned, California Box Rental. In fact, financial finances could be considered a side hustle. But I used to think of it, and I still do think there is a time for it. Like if you have something you like to do, you would do it if someone paid you or not, and you can make money on it, do it go for it. You go to the farmer's market and you meet people who are selling cookies. They just love to bake. Other people love to eat them. So great. I'll spend half a Saturday selling my cookies and make some fun money. Great. Yeah. I think where it gets dangerous is where people feel a sense of shame or missing out. You go on CNBC or you read up on, oh, my side hustle, I'm earning 6,000 a month in passive income and I'm doing this and that and you should sell on Amazon or do this or have, and it's just like, There's just this pervasive narrative of if you're not doing this, you're a lazy cow. Since when do you have to have a side hustle to be a worthy person? I think having a normal job is enough. I mean, think about all the people who are maybe their parents, maybe they're helping their elderly parents. Isn't it enough to work full time and take care of a household and cook and clean and then maybe have a few hours a week to just be human and enjoy your hobbies? and spend time with your friends? Like, when is that being lazy? Well, it's enough when you're happy with your salary there, when you're satisfied with what's coming in. Exactly. And that's a good point. So if you are able to meet the needs of your lifestyle, and you can meet your needs with what's coming in, why do you need a side hustle? You don't have to do it. Time is a commodity you don't get back. So, you know, if you're in a position where you're like, I can't 
I like what I'm doing, but I don't earn enough. And I have a lot of flexibility in my job. You're only really working 20 hours a week and you have your work from home or whatever it is. Yeah, maybe think about something you like to do that can either increase your skill set or make you more marketable in the future and take that on. I have somebody I know who he has a pressure washing business. He does it on the weekends. And during the week, he's a tax accountant, but he likes to just be outside and he doesn't make enough at his job. And he's like, this is something that's going to allow me to move out of my parents' house. That's great. Go for it. But I think if you're able to meet your needs and you know, you're happy with your life, work-life balance, don't feel guilted by society and YouTube and social media into doing a side hustle because then you'll be burnt out all around. You won't have free time and it's just not going to be sustainable. Well, now coming to your book, how to save money. So let's say you're spent. You just can't imagine doing anything else to make some extra cash and you're happy with your job. You don't want to side hustle. You don't want to, you know, start selling your stuff. So the other alternative is all the tips that you offer in your book, (laughs) saving money. So I know that you have a lot of chapters, just like I have a lot of chapters in my book. But what would you say are the top five things that you could do that will save you a substantial amount of money per month? What are the biggest parts of our budgets, right? Housing, transportation, and food. Those are the top three, right? Right off the bat, I would say those are the top three. Number one, are you living somewhere that is conducive to your lifestyle? If you were to move to a smaller place, Is it going to work for your family situation, number one? Mm -hmm. But if you're renting, can you either get a roommate or move to a smaller place or move closer to work or wherever you want to be so that you don't spend as much on transportation? So a lot of places, renting gets a bad rap, but at the end of the day, it's like you're paying in exchange for a place to live. That's what it is. So I would just say that there's a lot of costs that go into homeownership that don't get spoken about enough. So renting is okay, but look into what's available to you. You don't always have to go to a building or an apartment complex and rent a lease from them. There are websites like sublet.com, there's Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace. We're such a a transient society now. People are trying to get out of their leases and move somewhere else. Maybe you can take over their lease and negotiate on their behalf. Hey, I'll pay $2,000 a month instead of $2,200, and you don't have to pay an application fee, deposit, and then you only have to live there for six, seven months, and then you can move somewhere else. There's a lot of flexibility in that. And then what I would say is the other thing is transportation, right? So I'm not a fan of having a car payment. I think that is, and I don't, I want to say that with a sense of privilege. Yes, I did, was able to live at home in the early years and save money to buy a car. Mm -hmm. But cars are a necessity for some people. So I understand it. But if you can help it, don't have a car payment because that's interest going into something that, probably isn't going to be worth the same, at least what you bought it. Mm-hmm. So buy an efficient car, right? You get people who are like, oh, I'm going to go buy a new Bronco, but you drive it in the city and it gets 17 miles a gallon or whatever it gets. Gas adds up. And guess what else adds up? The more expensive the car you drive, your registration is going to be more, your insurance is going to be more, and your repairs are going to be more. So unless you can write a check for that car, I would go for something more economical. Where if you can avoid it, Move somewhere closer to where you need to be. Bike, take public transit. We have scooters now. We have e-bikes now. Oh my God, your world is so different from my world though. I'm in Canada where it's like, there's no way. We need like vehicles. <laughs> like, Really? Yes, of course, because everything's so spread out. We can't get downtown and most of us live in the suburbs. And Well, not most of us. The US is just like that though. Like the suburbs became popular again after COVID. Because people are like, we want space, we want to work from home, totally. we want a yard to hang out in because we can't go out in downtown. And then people were scared of public transit because they were scared of getting sick in an enclosed space with strangers. Yes. But I think at the end of the day, even if you live in a suburb, are you a two-car household or a one-car household? Mm-hmm. Can you be a one-car household? You know, I think transportation, you can just save a lot of money. E-bikes, you'd be surprised. You can go like, Five, 10 miles on that thing. (laughs) Yeah, I know. They're so cool. I love them, but... Yeah, they're great. They're a lifesaver. The other thing I would say is the third option is food, right? So I am a big foodie. I believe in feeding yourself nutritious whole foods. So I'm not going to be like, hey, just buy your groceries at the Dollar General store or something like that. Not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is have a meal plan, right? And I know this is harder with families because you're buying food and sometimes everyone eats it, sometimes not. 
But the more you focus on dry foods and having a meal plan, you're going to waste less. The less you waste, less goes money in the trash and it's better for the environment. The other thing is if you feel like something's going to go bad, freeze it. You can always thaw it later. I freeze stuff all the time. So that's a big thing. Look at joining a membership club. You'll save some money, right? You can buy in bulk. There's a lot of services now. I forget. It's like we don't waste imperfect foods and different kind of organizations where you can get food that's supposed to go to the landfill because it's ugly and you can get it and you can cook with it. Food doesn't have to be pretty. It just needs to be healthy and wholesome. So you can get discounts that way. Shop at the farmer's market, maybe join a CSA, right? You can find ways to really reduce that cost. And the last thing I'll say is maybe think about having a garden. If you're lucky enough to have a backyard, it's really easier than you think to grow your own fruits and veggies. Cool. I love that. Okay. So what are some other resources that you can offer the audience on how to make some extra money, be it websites, groups that they can join, whatever you can think of. I will maybe go against the crowd a little bit. I know a lot of people say, oh, make money on surveys, make money on this and that online. And I'm like, you know what? Five, six dollars here and there's really not going to change your life. So resources, I would just say is just, you know, the biggest thing is where you spend the most of your time. It's your job. Are there certifications you can get to maybe have a higher pay or a different title? Classes you can take. My library, a library is a great resource. Our library, we have access to LinkedIn Learning and Skillshare and Upwork and just different websites where you can literally take classes for free, certifications for free. Your library will pay for it. So that's a huge resource. You know, if you're in a position where one more certification or letter next to your name will bump your salary by 10 grand, think about that. And the other thing is, like I said, is look at your ability to Controlling your costs is big too, right? So housing, transportation, insurance, food, all of that. Can you have a roommate? Can you live with family? Can you do things like that? That's a way to control costs. And then for earning, what can I do with my salary? Get some additional certifications. Shop yourself around in the job market and can think about ways that you, things you like to do that maybe can earn you money. For me, I love sustainability. I love zero waste. And I realized that moving boxes create a lot of waste. So I said, you know what? These are boxes I can buy and I'm helping remove boxes from the landfill. I'm earning extra money. I'm renting them out. It's not costing me much and I'm getting them back and it's creating this circular economy kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So some people love pets. They may have a mobile dog washing business, whatever it is. Like spend your time where it's worth it to you. Don't feel like you need a side hustle, but think about ways that you want to spend your time. I love that, Gary. This is so awesome. Thanks again for coming on and offering us such great advice. So tell me, where can people find you? Of course, Marika, this is such a fun conversation. I feel like we can talk for days. I always have so many ideas and I want to hear more about your ideas because your book was stellar. I'm at financialfies.com. That's where uh, we post once a week. You can find the book there too. You can send me a message there, any questions, comment on a post if you like it or don't, any follow-ups to this episode definitely feel free to find me there. Great. Thanks again for coming on the show, Gary. Thanks, Marika. Hope you discovered some valuable tips and strategies to bring more money into your life with Gary. If you have any questions or want to explore further, feel free to reach out to him or dive into his book, Financial Fives. Remember, the path to financial confidence is an ongoing journey. So tune into our next episode where we explore the significance of financial literacy and how to integrate it into your everyday life. Get ready to hear some powerful advice on how to take control of your financial future. Thank you for listening. Now go out there and make some extra cash. <laughs>